Hi, I'm Sissy and I'm going to be teaching you how to make marshmallows today. They're not too complicated, we just need a few basic ingredients and some generalized equipment that most home bakers should already have in their house. So here's your marshmallow utensil list. You're going to need a one and a half quart pot with a lid, a scale or measuring cups with spoons, an eight by eight cake pan, a stand mixer with a whip attachment, a double boiler or a microwave safe bowl. You can also use just like a double boiler insert with a regular pot as well. A spatula, a cutting board, a knife or another cutting utensil, a fine mesh sieve, a candy thermometer, and an airtight storage container for once you're done. One quick note, I do recommend using either a stainless steel or a ceramic mixer bowl because they can handle the high temperatures that the sugar syrup will be cooked at. If you use plastic, it can melt, and if you use glass, the extreme change in temperatures can make the bowl shatter. So again, I highly recommend you having either a stainless steel or a ceramic mixing bowl. That way it can handle the high temperatures of the sugar syrup. Here's your ingredient list. You're going to need 12 ounces or 1 and 3 quarters cup of granulated sugar, 8 ounces or 1 cup of water divided in half, 5 ounces or a third cup plus 2 tablespoons of light corn syrup, 3 packets or 22 grams or 2 tablespoons plus 3 quarter teaspoons of unflavored gelatin, 1 and a quarter teaspoons of vanilla extract or any other flavoring you'd like, just a pinch of salt, some nonstick spray or vegetable shortening, and about half a cup of cornstarch and half a cup of powdered sugar. So there's a little prep work involved when you first get into making marshmallows that you want to be sure to do so you know what proper temperature you're going to cook yours at. Most recipes are set for sea level temperatures, which means water boils at 212 Fahrenheit. At high elevations, for every about 500 feet above sea level, water boils at one degree lower. So we have to adjust candy making tem temperatures for that high altitude. With the, the way that you're going to figure this out is just take a pot of water and put your thermometer in and just set it to boil and see what temperature your water boils at. Where I am in the city, water boils at about 200 degrees. So I am going to take the 212 that water boils at sea level and subtract the temperature my water boils at. So 212 minus 200 and I'm going to get 12 degrees. So the recipe that you use is going to have a certain temperature that tells you to cook at. You need to adjust that temperature for however many degrees off your water boils at less than sea level. So since mine boils 12 degrees less than at sea level, I'm going to take the temperature in the recipe of 250 and subtract that 12, and I'm going to cook my sugar syrup at 238, okay? So this is something that you would have to adjust for yourself because even within the city, you're going to have different elevations. We're not all at the same. So I highly recommend taking the time to just boil some water with your thermometer in it and making sure you know what temperature your water boils at. It will save you a lot of trouble in making sure that your marshmallows come out perfectly or any other type of sh cookie or confection that you're making that requires you to boil sugar. Caramel is kind of the same. You want to adjust that temperature. So the first thing you want to start with is going ahead and preparing your pan and your spatula. You really don't want to be in the middle of making your marshmallows and then have to figure out how to do this part. It's just better to already have it ready and prepared. So what I just do is take some of my shortening and rub it in just like you would if you've ever made a cake when you're greasing a pan. You're going to do the same thing except we're not going to add any sugar to it. You are just going to just add the oil and the grease. You want enough in there that your marshmallows aren't going to stick, but you also, of course, don't want too much because then you get really greasy marshmallows. But just enough in there to coat the whole pan. And again, you can use nonstick spray. I just choose not to because they can tend to leave residues and sometimes things can transfer even onto your marshmallows where you get kind of like a little film. But you're less likely to get that if you use some shortening instead. So marshmallows are very sticky, so you also want to make sure that you grease any of the implements you're going to be using to touch them. 
So also go ahead and be sure to grease your spatula that you'll need later on when we pour them out of the bowl. So going ahead and getting that and then you can just set those aside and we'll come back to those at the end. Next, we're going to measure out our ingredients. First, you'll add your 12 ounces or one and three quarters cups of sugar. Then you're gonna add in your pinch of salt. Your five ounces or one third cup plus two tablespoons of the light corn syrup. Then you'll add the four ounces of water. After that, go ahead and give it a stir to make sure all of the granules of sugar are coated with the water and the corn syrup. You don't want any clumps of sugar that may not get cooked. So with this, we're gonna go ahead and put this on the stove. You want it under about medium heat and just get it cooking for right now, and then we'll get our gelatin blooming. Next, we're going to make the gelatin bloom. You're going to measure out either your three packets or 22 grams of gelatin and put it in either your microwave safe bowl or this is, I use a double boiler insert for mine. Then you're gonna add your four ounces of water and your one and a half teaspoons of vanilla or other flavoring extract. Go ahead and stir that as well. I like to use a small whisk just to make sure that there's no clumps of gelatin and it's all properly dissolved and then just set it aside. And then we're gonna get back to our little pot. You wanna add enough water in it to create a simmer and just put it on the stove now and start letting it simmer. You don't want it at a full boil, just a small amount. And then we will use this later to melt our gelatin. Once your sugar syrup is boiling, you're going to add a lid and set a timer for two minutes. We do this so that the condensation from the lid will wash down all the sugar crystals to make sure they're all dissolved. If there's some sugar that hasn't been fully melted and dissolved into the water in the corn syrup, you may get crystallization, which can turn your marshmallows into rock candy or you get really gritty marshmallows. So you wanna make sure that there's no agitation. Don't stir the sugar syrup after it's boiling. You wanna just let it cook all on its own to make sure those sugar crystals don't crystallize and cause any sort of grittiness. After the two minutes is up, you can remove the lid. And again, remember, don't stir it, just let it cook on its own. And you're going to insert your thermometer and let it cook until you reach the temperature that it needs to be. So for our base recipe, we're starting out at 250. Since we're at high altitude, for whatever temperature that your water boils at, remember we're going to subtract that. So my water boils 12 degrees less than at sea level. So 250 minus 12 is 238. So I'm going to cook my sugar syrup until it reaches 238. This may differ depending on where you live, so make sure you take that extra step and see what temperature your water boils at. Once your sugar syrup hits your 238, go ahead and remove your thermometer. Be careful it will be hot. And you're gonna take your sugar syrup and go pour it in the bowl of your mixer. Go ahead and pour it in as gently as you can. And then we're just gonna let it rest. Then you're gonna come back over to your stove and if you're doing the method I am, we're going to go ahead and put your stainless steel bowl over your simmering water so that it can start to melt that gelatin. If you're doing this in the microwave, you wanna be very careful and not scorch your gelatin. So microwave safe bowl, heat it on a very low temperature and make sure it doesn't overheat your gelatin. Do it very slowly, very gently. Once your gelatin is melted, you're going to take your melted gelatin, turn on your mixer to a low speed, and gently pour in your gel melted gelatin. It shouldn't really foam up here. You want it to just gently go in. If it's foaming, that means your sugar was still too hot, and it's gonna scorch your gelatin. Your marshmallows will still work, they just may be a little bit more dense. Then we're gonna slowly increase our speed, I stop a few seconds at every high speed. Our goal is to get it all the way in my mixer, it goes up to 10. 
So whatever your high speed is on your mixer. Once your mixture is ready, so those strings are pulling from the side and it's about double to triple in volume, you'll go ahead and stop your mixer. You should see it drip slowly back in. It shouldn't be too liquidy and it shouldn't be so stiff that it doesn't drip back in. Then you can tap the whisk on the side, make sure to get as much off as possible, and we'll go pour it into our pan. Then we're going to come over to our prepared pan and we're gonna pour it in. So it should pour fairly easily in ribbons into your pan, just like that. You can use your spatula to kind of help scoop it out a bit. You will have some left in the bowl but you don't want too much left in. If there's too much left in, then that probably means that you over whipped it. If it falls too easily and is just super liquidy, that's gonna mean that it's under whipped. And while they're set up, they still, they might be a little bit gummier. Once you're done pouring, go ahead and cover your pan and we're gonna let them set. At this point, your work is done. So your marshmallows are done. They just need to set up for quite a while. I suggest at least eight hours. I tend to make mine in the late afternoon and then first thing in the morning I'll come back and cut them and get them dusted so they're actually ready to eat. If you try and cut them too soon, they will end up very gummy and possibly not even hold their shape. It's best if you let them set up at least 8 hours to make sure that they are set and ready. It's the hardest part because they're done. You know, you just want to eat them, but I highly recommend waiting overnight and making sure they're ready. So they're definitely not something that you can make the day that you need them. Always, you want to always prepare and make them the night before so that they're ready for the next day for sure. But when we wake up tomorrow, we can cut our marshmallows and savor the delicious sweetness. All right, so now it's morning and your marshmallows should be set. So they've sat out overnight and they are ready to be cut. First, you'll mix your half a cup of cornstarch with your half a cup of powdered sugar. Just go ahead and stir them and make sure they're blended really well. And then you're going to take that mix and sprinkle it over your cutting board. You also want to sprinkle just a little bit on top of the marshmallows so that you they're not too sticky. And then you can slide out the marshmallows from your pan and lay them flat on your cutting board. Make sure that whatever you choose to cut with, whether it be a knife, a cookie cutter, or a pizza cutter, that you grease that so that your marshmallows don't stick to it while you're cutting. Then at this point, you can cut however you want. You can cut big marshmallows, small marshmallows, it's kind of up to you. I tend to do about one inch squares just because I like the size and they make perfect little snacks to just to pop in your mouth. But however big or small you want them, you can have a, you have a lot of flexibility here with that. Once your marshmallows are cut, you'll need to slightly peel them apart. It may help to dust a little more of your powdered sugar and cornstarch mixture onto them. That way they're not too sticky. But you just need to peel them apart and get them all separated. After they're all peeled,
peel to part, you're going to sprinkle more of your powdered sugar and cornstarch on top, and then just take your hands and roll them through them. You want all sides coated because you don't want sticky marshmallows that are going to get stuck together. You want to make sure all four sides are completely coated in the mixture so they won't be sticky. You can also do this in a bowl where if you want to just put a bunch of your powdered sugar and cornstarch in a bowl, shake it really big with your marshmallows inside, it can help coat it. I just tend to like doing it with my hands because it's easier to see what marshmallows still need to be coated this way. Your very last step, you're going to take your marshmallows that have just been coated and your fine mesh sieve and throw a few marshmallows inside and then just shake it. You want to try and get as much of the excess coating off so that it's only the layer that needs to be on it to prevent it from being sticky is still there. So you're just going to keep doing this in small batches until they're all done and you can pour them directly into whatever container you're going to be storing them in after they've been shaken. an inch so with an 8 by 8 I ended up with 64 marshmallows in my bucket but depending on what size you cut you're going to end up with different sizes so or different amounts depending on what size you chose to cut yours but they should be some nice and fluffy marshmallows ready to eat so I recommend these in a lot of different ways so beyond you of course can just eat them but beyond that, I love putting them in my tea. You can add them to coffee. You can make s'mores. You can even kind of melt them and make Rice Krispie treats. You can melt them into making cookies. All kinds of ways exist to use marshmallows that are not just throwing them in some hot chocolate. So experiment, have fun, use different flavors. You can add sprinkles. You can add cookie crumbs. You can roll them in different things besides powdered sugar. Basically anything that will keep them dry. You can even ro roll them around in cocoa powder and make some chocolate ones. So have fun, experiment. Once you get the basics down, you can do anything you want with your marshmallows. <laughs>